Now let's move on to the next question. A business had 50 units in inventory on 1st January 2021 that had been valued at $5 per unit. On 7 January, they bought another 100 units at a cost of $6 US dollars per unit. On 14 January, they sold 70 units of uh, 70 units for $10 each. On 25th January, they bought another 8 units at a cost of $7 per unit. If the business uses the first in first out approach to the valuation of inventory, so what is the value of inventory at 31st January 2021? Okay, so let's take the opening uh, units. So these are the units. We'll take the rates with the value and the total value. Okay, so that's an operating balance of 50 units. This was valued at 5 US dollars. This is in US dollars. Then the total operating balance will be 250 US dollars. On 7th January, so this is uh, 7th January, they bought another 100 units, 100 units bought at the rate of 6 dollars, so which is going to be 600 plus the opening the total value will be 850. On 14th January, they sold 70 units for $10 each. On 14th January, they sold 70 units. Now what is the method we are applying? Five for method. So therefore, first in, first out. So out of the 70, this 50 units will be used first at the rate of five, and remaining 20 will be used from these 100 units. So this is first in first out. So at the rate of six. So therefore the total value will be here 250 plus 120, which is going to be 370 with the uh, the cost of sales for the 70. So what will be the uh, closing balance as a result of this? So that's going to be now here 150 is the total units, 70 sold, 80 is the balance. So this balance will be at the rate of six. So therefore 480 should be the closing balance as of 14th January. So 850 minus 370 also you will get the same balance 480. So otherwise straight away you can take 80 times 6 which is the, the closing uh, uh, value of inventory. So this is the last purchase. On, on this price the value will be 480. On 25th January, on 25th January they bought another 80 units at the rate of 7. So therefore that amount will be 560 plus the uh, closing balance for 480 and purchases of 560. So that's going to be how much? The total will be 1040. Okay. So therefore, if the business uses the first in first out approach to the valuation of inventory, what is the value of inventory at 31st January 2021? So the total stock quantity will be 160. The valuation is 1040 US dollars. So this is the answer for this particular question. Now let's move on to the next question. At 1st March 2021, AG owed sales tax to the tax authorities of 25,225 US dollars. During the month of March, AG had the following transactions. Sales of 500,000 US dollars, exclusive of 15% sales tax, purchases of 345,000, inclusive of 15% sales tax. During March, she had paid no tax to the tax authorities. How much did AG owe to the tax authorities for the sales tax, tax at the end of March 2021? So basically, there is an opening balance of 25,225 uh, to be paid to the tax authorities. So therefore, this is a liability. This is payable to the tax authorities. Then you need to calculate during the month of March, there are two transactions, sales and purchases. Basically, when you take sales, you need to calculate the sales tax. This 500,000 is exclusive of 15% sales tax, which means this 500,000 excluding 50% uh, sales tax. Okay. So when you calculate the sales tax, basically you collect the sales tax from the customers and that will be paid back to the tax authorities. So that amount to be calculated. It's a payable amount. On purchases, 345,000 inclusive of 15% sales tax. This 345,000 includes 15% sales tax. Okay, so you need to identify that amount included in the purchases. So on purchases, what we can do is this amount is paid to the uh, what you call the seller. So therefore, 
uh, as far as 80 company is concerned, they can claim the sales tax paid on purchases against their uh, sales tax on sales value. Okay, so let's calculate this amount. So first and foremost, we will take the opening balance. So we will we'll take the uh, tax payable amount. This is the tax payable, sales tax payable. Uh, there's a, a balance brought forward, 25,225. Then you have sales, 500,000. On this, this amount is excluding sales tax of 15%. For example, if you take the sales value as 100 and the sales tax as 15%, so that will be 115. Okay, so this 500,000 is excluding sales tax. So therefore, on this we can straight away we can calculate 15% sales tax. So that will be 75,000. Okay, this 75,000 has to be paid. So therefore, it's a liability. You can say sales 75,000. Then we have purchases. On purchases, 345,000. Okay, so on this amount, this amount is including the sales tax. Okay, so when you take uh, the sales, the purchase value as 100, when you take the tax value as 15, so that's going to be 115. So this 345 is equal to 115 times 15%. So that's, that's going to be how much? That amount will be 45,000. This 45,000 can be claimed from the tax authorities, so therefore, therefore this amount to be debited to the sales tax payable account. This is on purchases. Okay. So therefore, what is the net amount payable to the tax authorities? So you can calculate this: two hundred twenty-five, hundred, two two five, and the payable amount will be fifty-five. So this is the amount to be paid to the tax authorities. Okay. So we had the opening balance of twenty five thousand two twenty five. Then we calculated the sales tax amount on the sales value. This amount is uh, exclusive of fifteen percent sales tax. So therefore, we can apply the rate on the uh, total amount of five hundred thousand, which is going to be seventy five thousand. However, the purchases three forty five thousand is including sales tax. So therefore, we need to calculate 15% sales tax by dividing this by 115 times 15, which is going to be 45,000. So this is a receivable amount. So therefore, we need to debit the sales tax payable account. Then when you take the total, the difference will be the amount, the net amount payable to the tax authorities. So this is the answer for this particular question.